Hey guys, Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana today, and I am pissed off, disappointed, sad, and upset, and honestly feeling a little bit confused. The topic today is the new eBay authenticity guarantee. I have some pretty serious problems with this. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get right into this video and tell you why I'm so perturbed today. Uh, first, let's take a look at the eBay Authenticity Guarantee. For those of you who don't know, I haven't looked at the threshold, but if you buy an expensive raw card, eBay, uh, despite the fact that they have a million other freaking problems that they need to fix, have decided that they're going to employ a third-party authenticator to authenticate every high-end raw card that is transacted on their site. That is a preposterous, monumental task. Uh, to begin with and so a lot of us who've been in the hobby for years and years were a little bit skeptical uh, About the application process and the scrutiny and whether or not it's really Even a viable service that's being provided and what warranted this uh, this change to where they would start doing this So let's take a look at their policy here and as you can see no fakes no fraud no doubt We're authenticating high value trading cards with professional authenticators. It's my understanding. It's CSG. I'm not sure uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No cost to you. Authenticity guarantee. Uh, here we go. So genuine peace of mind. They just kind of explain why they're doing it. It's a third party authenticator. They're professionals. Ungraded cards over $500. So there's your answer as far as the threshold. They've got a link here where you can check out the frequently asked questions for the full list of requirements for a card to be run through their authentication. My understanding of the process generally speaking is number one, uh, when you buy a, an expensive raw card over $500, the seller will ship the card to eBay. eBay will run it through the authentication process. If it passes, eBay will then send it on to the buyer. If it does not pass, eBay will send it back to the seller and refund the buyer their money. So I bought a few, I think I bought now since this authentication process was put into effect, I think I bought three or four. As you know, I am collecting the 1997 Precious Metal Gems Red Complete Set. So I'm buying, uh, I'm often buying raw Precious Metal Gem Reds from 1997. Those, for the most part, in fact, for all parts now, those cards are always going to be over $500 regardless of condition. So I recently bought uh, this Joe Smith. Let's see uh, if we can pull it up. There it is. There's my Joe Smith that I bought. I'm trying to hide the seller's identification. I'm not sure they want to be included in this video, but I guess you could go figure it out. It is public record. I bought this Joe Smith Precious Metal Gems Red on, let's see, February 13th. Okay, so I'm filming this on February 24th. Uh, I get this email from them. Here are the details. Hi, Brian M. I'm not sure why they use my middle initial. Our authentication partner received your item from the seller, but unfortunately it didn't pass inspection. Absolutely no explanation of why it didn't pass inspection. If it's called an authenticity guarantee, it would leave one to conclude logically that it is inauthentic, right? Not trimmed, not miscut, not colored, not any of these other uh, typical designations that you can sometimes experience with 1997 Precious Metal Gems Red. It's an authenticity guarantee, so it's my understanding that their job is to make sure that the card is authentic, meaning the actual you know pack pulled card, the real deal, not whether it's been altered or anything like that. So we assess items covered by the authenticity guarantee against the highest standards, and we reject items for a variety of reasons. Here they give a couple, it's including, but I'm assuming not limited to, as I always say, this list is inclusive, but not exhaustive. Damaged packaging, missing accessories, not matching the seller's description. That is something that we need to talk about in just a second, or an inability to confirm authenticity. So it could be any of these four reasons or any of a myriad of other reasons. Uh, I have not been informed what those reasons are. This is all I get. We're refunding the $1,289.99. Okay, now the world knows I paid $1,289.99 for a Joe Smith Metal Universe card. Again, you're probably like, I'm going to stop watching this dude's videos. He's an idiot. Who buys a Joe Smith card for $1,289.99? Trust me, there's a method to this madness. It's similar to the guy that just paid $90,000 for the Johnny Moore uh, 1986 Fleer PSA 10. Uh, but I'm digressing. Your refund may take three to five days, business days, to process. Okay, I'm fine. If the card was fake, that's fine. 
Uh, this happened to me twice on two separate transactions with the exact same seller, and I'm pissed because I know for a fact the card's not fake, right? If the card's trimmed or miscolored or whatever, I want the card anyway. I want the card. I should be able to override this BS, to be quite honest with you. I want the card. I want to send it to PSA. I want to get it slab authentic, altered, put it in a PSA slab, and have it as part of my set. I don't want eBay to turn the card around and send it back to the seller. So I beg the, this begs the question, why don't I just reach out to the seller and communicate to get the deal done off eBay? Well, this is exactly in contravention to eBay's policies. So they're pushing me into breaching one of their policies, which is let's get the deal done off eBay since they can't authenticate it, obviously, and so we don't have to pay eBay fees. So they're basically implementing a service, this authenticity guarantee, which is BS, to, uh, you know, that's pushing me off of their platform to go get this deal done off eBay with the same particular seller who I know and trust, has a great eBay rating, has a great feedback percentage, who has been super great as far as communication goes, even after the BS that's shaken out. And so to make matters worse, this didn't just happen with the Joe Smith. It happened with a Kevin Willis, exact same card, exact same set, exact same parallel, the same exact thing. And I'm pissed because I thought I got a pretty good deal on it. I know y'all are laughing, you know, laughing at the screen, tears coming down your face. I'm an idiot for paying $12.90 for the Joe Smith, you know, so here's the other one. We issued you a full refund. You'll get it in three to five days. You get your taxes and shipping back. But here's the deal. The, another Joe Smith, same raw card, regardless of condition, same raw card sold for $3,100 the next day. Well, I picked mine up for $1,289.99. I'm really excited about that sale. Well, now I've got, you know, the seller's got the benefit of saying, well, somebody just paid 3100 so now I'm not going to communicate with Cajun Cardboard off of eBay. I know that 3100 is the number. Well, I'm getting screwed out of a 1289 Joe Smith, you know, raw card that I could get slabbed, authentic, altered, maybe, or even, maybe even authentic, because obviously eBay's not using PSA to authenticate their cards. They're using some other third party. So who knows? Maybe PSA would have slabbed this sucker and given me a five or a four which would have been fantastic for my set. At the very worst, PSA would have authenticated it as authentic and altered. Now, uh, the only way that I'm on a rant that's unjustified is if both the Joe Smith and the Kevin Willis are fake cards. I'm not aware of anyone faking Joe Smith and Kevin Willis cards uh, from 1997. Uh, no matter uh, how you know sophisticated the criminal is, I would think that they had bigger and better plans uh, as far as duping people and scamming people and creating inauthentic fake replica cards. I don't think they would go to Joe Smith and Kevin Willis. No offense to Joe Smith and Kevin Willis' mom and dad, but uh, those aren't the dudes that, that have their cards fake very often. It's probably the Jordans and the Kobe's and whatnot, as you guys know. But what I wanted to say is there's also this, uh, I want to scroll down uh, because, let's see, they also state somewhere in here that and this is an important this is really important to note it says somewhere on here that they make sure that the card matches the description right the description in the title well here is a scenario for you and i have to give some credit to baseball card collector investor dealer chris sewell i was watching one of his videos there was a 1953 tops willie mays reprint card okay so there's a tops 1953 willie mays reprint card that was Printed by Topps. Uh, it was described as 1953 Topps Willie Mays card. Okay, it's like a $1 card. Somebody paid $1,000 uh, for that card. Well, that's a raw card. It's over $500, which means it's going to be run up the flagpole to eBay's authenticity guarantee. Well, eBay is going to look at the card. Is the card authentic? Well, yes, it is. It's, an, it's a Topps printed, pack pulled reprint of a 1953 Willie Mays. So it is an authentic card. But will eBay return it? I don't know because it's not as described in the title. In other words, the seller was obvious. I mean, the buyer was obviously a novice. The seller was either also a novice and or had bad intentions and was a bad actor in the hobby. Didn't adequately describe the car as a reprint. And a buyer bought what he thought was the cleanest looking 1953, you know, Willie Mays card he's ever seen for $1,000. Well, what's eBay going to do with that? That's a real card. Uh, it doesn't match the description. Is eBay going to return that? Is eBay out here as the uh, novice, naive, 
new to the hobby noob buyer police and protecting every accidental purchase that a buyer makes because they can't read a description or can't just examine the card and you know and doesn't have the experience to identify it as a reprint i don't know so that's one dilemma that you're going to run into here's another problem you guys are going to see if we go here to completed sales there's my sale hold on i want you to see this ebay's not taking my completed sale out and it's the same thing for the Kevin Willis. It's showing up in completed items. Now, people obviously can't use eBay completed items for um, for comps anyway, right? Because eBay just shows you the listing price and it says best offer. It doesn't give you the actual number. But the question is, I mean, I'm pretty sure that Card Ladder pulls this data. I'm pretty sure that all those other market movers and hedge fund or card hedge or whatever it's called in 130 point, I'm assuming they just pulled data. They're not gonna, I don't know if there's a way for them to, on their own, distinguish that this Joe Smith card did not actually sell. Sell. It was not actually a consummated sale. Money, money changed hands, then it changed back. So how how are these other data pricing tools such as Card Ladder and Card Hedge or whatever it's called or Market Movers uh, or 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 One Thirty Point or Snoop or whatever I don't Sloop Snoop I don't know whatever those other ones are called I use Card Ladder. How are they going to know? that this eBay completed sold, look, I've got it marked over here on the left, completed sold items, and it's showing. There's my Joe Smith, right? These are completed sold items up here at the top, two of them. It shows the one that actually did. Well, we don't know if this one went through either, right? I mean, ProScene sold it, but we don't know if the eBay authenticator is gonna send this one back as well. There's no way of knowing. And so it could be lead to misleading comps in the hobby. There's a lot of reasons this uh, authenticity guarantee is BS. Number one, they need to explain it to me. Number two, they need to tell me, you know, is it inauthentic or did you just not like something about it? Like the edges, the corner, was the packaging damaged, right? That's one of the, the reasons they've listed on there. Like I need more. I need these cards. I want these cards. I want them for the price I paid. And now because of this eBay authentic, authenticity guarantee, I can't get this card because then now I'm gonna have to pay $3,100 for the next one down the road or at least more than I paid, right? Um, so uh, this is just uh, me on a rant. I just wanted you guys to get one of my experiences. I don't know if you guys have had this experience yet. This situation has literally caused me to reconsider trying to complete this set. I've got a good chunk of common 1997 Metal Universe cards that I still need for this set. I've been buying raw, putting them in my PWCC vault with the intention of taking these cards, shipping them in bulk to PSA, and giving them instructions to slab them no matter what. If it's authentic, if you deem it's altered, colored, trimmed, whatever, slab the card. I don't care. Put it in a PSA slab. I just want to make sure these cards are real. This set is precious. It's called Precious Metal Gems for a reason. It's freaking precious. And so having any of these cards in a PSA slab is enough for me. I want the cards. I don't want eBay to send the card back. I wanted to be able to override that. I certainly don't want to now have to pay triple what I just paid for a card on a deal that I got less than two weeks ago. Um, not to mention the fact seller may have spent the money. Seller may have assumed the deal was consummated and gone and spent that money. I... Uh, might have spent the money on something else. Have I known, you know, eBay was going to send it back to me? There might have been other opportunities for me to take to buy another Joe Smith card, like the one that sold the next day. Um, you know, who's to say I wouldn't have paid thirty one hundred for the damn card? I need it. Um, so, all kinds of reasons to hate eBay. All sorts of reasons to think this is a BS policy. I, I hope a lot of you see this video, and I hope you share this video. And, uh, and and this is just an example of eBay having a million freaking problems they need to fix, and they're creating other problems that they don't need to exist. There's no reason for them to to tackle this. They're not bringing anything to the table. Uh, it's just you know it's one of those deals where at some point you've just got to say buyer beware. You know what I mean? I mean at some point buyer beware. Uh, it's not eBay's job to police this, and it certainly if you want to police it, and you, you know you've got the best intentions, eBay. Well, for God's sakes, at least you could explain to me why my card was rejected and give me the opportunity to say click override i want the damn card send it to me i don't care what you think i don't care that the packaging was damaged i want the card i got a good deal on it um you know i don't care about the trimmed or the miscut or whatever you de deemed it to be so anyway you guys get on ebay um you know read through this policy right here that you can see let me know what you think um you know authentic what without a doubt you know, here you go. Here's the first sentence. Upon receiving your item, the professional authenticators first check that it matches the listing description. Where does that leave us on the Willie Mays, you know, situation? The Willie Mays reprint or the 1952 mantle reprints out there that some, you know, naive buyer, God forbid, 
purchased for two thousand dollars when it's it's a reprinted one dollar Mickey Mantle card. Um, it's just really frustrating. I don't think eBay put a lot of thought into something that was going to have such massive sweeping uh, ramifications. So anyway, thank you guys for listening. Spread the word if you don't mind, uh, or just share the link to this video so the hobby knows what the heck's going on. Uh, hopefully on Instagram, card porn's on this, and uh, this has got to change. I mean, this, this is not going to work. I, I don't know what else to say. I don't buy a lot of raw cards over $500. I'm not a gambler. Uh, but, you know, when there's a card where I don't care what it grades, I will be willing to pay over $500. Um, anyway, and if you're a Joe Smith collector or a Kevin Willis collector, I apologize for the uh, uh, disparaging remarks about your PC. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, keep collecting. Stay positive despite the BS that we just talked about today. And peace.